Eu vou amar fucking me, gente. You're a soldier, Bodhi. Heavy. <clears throat> the line that Bodhi says, this game is rigged, echoes Marla, Dan Marla Daniels' advice her husband in season one, an, af an, an, affer an afferic refrain that emphasizes David Simon's point that the socioeconomic changes connect and affect everyone across classes in different ways. Like, so for example, when he says, you know, I've always done basically what I've been told to do, and then they throw me out of the streets. So think about, you know, the people who've lost their 401ks, you know, after years of service, and things like that. Um, another anaphora is Bodhi's reference to, to chess pawns, which is from um, season one, when D'Angelo, um, a, a, a Barksdale's, Avon Barksdale's nephew, teaches chess to Bodhi and Wallace, another low-level drug dealer that Bodhi will eventually have kill in doing what, as he's told. By the end of season four, all three of these characters here, Wallace, D'Angelo, and Bodhi, are dead. Pawns in a game that while they can, while they can see the board and, chest and the other pieces to some extent, and they, they can even understand the rules of the game, they know that they don't have any control over it. More than anything else, the sense of being in a game that is rigged, in which your actions don't matter, um, is what produces the rage not only of the characters, but also the viewers of the show. That is, even what we perceive as our goal, goals, as conceived with, say, a, an appraisal theory of emotion, are circumscribed by bureaucratic and capital, capitalist institutions that go beyond individuals. That is, while agents have more or less power and responsibility, for example, a moral of Stanfield versus a Bodhi, we cannot understand the reasons for anger without understanding the structures that produce them, and we also cannot change or eradicate or assuage that anger unless we change those structures. So, Sorry, I'm almost done. So, to conclude, I'd like to revisit some of the previous points and discuss how the wires form and contact actually complexify the picture posed by cultural and cognitive studies. First, the wire illustrates and expands the cognitive understand, cognitivist understanding of emotion as appraisal, but in less individualistic and atomistic terms than sometimes used in the psychological literature. In the show, we repeatedly see persons directing anger towards others perceived explicitly or implicitly to be illegitimately and or intentionally obstructing a goal. The terms of illegitimacy are based on group norms, whether that group is the police force, the labor union, the gang, the school system, or other more amorphous um, norms of different groups. But The Wire and other texts I look at explore how this narrative of anger, individual versus individual, informs the in experience and expression of anger. In other words, the narrative creates the emotion, says that I should be angry at this person. One of the strongest narratives, particularly for the middle class officials of the police, the government, the school, and the newspaper, and the working class members of the labor union, is that, uh, is that of coping potential, or the notion that one ought to be able to change a situation. The contradiction between this, con const this constitutive narrative, um, constitutive of the emotion as well as of the subject, and the institutional, historical, and collective forces that actually create the situation creates not only frustration, although a low level of frustration permeates the series, but also explosive anger. The expression of this anger is also culturally deviated. As Hooks and Ahmed discuss, certain bodies are already written as being angry. Moreover, the per political anger expressed by some is often dismissed as really about anger, as irrational and aggressive or aggressive. In fact, The Wire demonstrates how some forms of anger, even and particularly in the most demonized, um, racialized, gendered, anger, angry bodies, can be a manifestation of what Hooks describes as presence, the assertion of subjectivity that colonizers do not want to see. Against the anger of Bodhi, or say, Naaman, another one of the characters um, in season four, um, Marlo Stanfield, who's the new drug kingpin's coldness and lack of emotion, particularly suits him well to enter the worlds of business and politics. That the more intellectual but also more naive Stringer Bell, um, that is, that the more, intellect, the more intellectual but also more naive Stringer Bell, that is, Stringer Bell is naive in believing that what he learned in business classes applies equally to everyone. At the same time, Bodhi and Naaman's anger, in and of themselves, do not lead to solutions. The series, while tracing where their anger comes from, does not romanticize their anger. 
In fact, his anger doesn't make any difference for Bodie. What is different for Naaman, this is one of the characters from season four, is that someone else, who can, uh, Major Buddy Colvin, who does see the larger context and who has more needs, is willing to help Naaman to see that context and perhaps try to change it. Um, in other words, the show overall is, illustrates how anger is, part of an is in part an individual experience and cognitive process, but is also, and in terms of causality and remedy, even more importantly, a product of historical, social, and ideologically constructed contexts. The characters' goals are just as historically, socially, and ideologically constructed as are the collective, and not necessarily in the good sense, in the collective of institutions, bureaucracies, and systems that block those goals. While a cognitive appraisal, as a processing of information into new information, arguably constitutes the grounds for these emotions, that appraisal takes place in contexts that are just as important to understand. So therefore, in order to truly understand anger and its causes, and more importantly, to change them, I would argue that, I argue that we need to continue this conversation between investigations into, cogn into cognition and, and into culture.